I got my calculations right, we got six pastors here tonight out of 30 people. <coughs> pastors, hold up your hands. Four. Six. I was right again. Wow, we were all twice in one week. <laughs> How many teachers, Sunday school teachers, Bible study teachers, something like that? Good. Did you hold up your hand somewhere in there, brother? Me. Pastor. And teacher. True. Uh, somebody asked me a long time ago, so why do you get all these copies and bring all that stuff and give all that out? Well, I got a testimony tonight, sitting at a table with a guy, and he said, you know that teaching you did on communion uh, a while back? I said, yeah. Handed those papers out, and he said, we're using that in our church right now. Because he said, and this is not a compliment to me, it's a compliment to the Holy Ghost and the living Word of God. But he said, you put that together like I've never seen that put together before. Where's the pastor from Lincoln? Where are you? I started out in uh, Exodus to teach about communion. Duh, yeah. But that's where and uh, this, this person tonight told me. Bless my heart. He said, uh, we're using that. He said, well, he said, I'm using that in, a, in some class uh, at his church. I don't know if it's the whole church or Sunday school or what, but he wants to tell you, I guess, a little later. <laughs> Father God, in Jesus' name, it's going to be you. Holy Ghost, it's going to be you. Lord Jesus, this is going to be you. Oh, how about a little Logos and Raymond yeah. in there as well? It's going to be all y'all, but I can't do it. <laughs> Here we go. Thank you. Ezekiel. We've been talking about uh, spiritual warfare. We've been talking about demons. We've been talking about revival. We've been talking about taking the city or, or at least having revival in the city. We've been talking about having victory over the devil. <clears throat> now, here's what you don't know. Each of us folk that are called to speak here have, in my case, no contact with what anybody else is going to say or do. Now, some of the guys do have contact. They work it that way. I work it the exact opposite way. I don't want to hear what you're going to say. <laughs> Because I'm going to say what I think he wants me to say. And I didn't say that they didn't. I didn't say that. What I said was, I want to hear what he wants me to say. And by God, he got it right again. <laughs> <laughs> and Brother Michael, I'm impressed by your, by your presentation. I'm impressed. Boy's a Baptist. <laughs> talking about demons not just a casual mention thereof but a whole sermon what's my point pick on my brother, brother Mike no God's up to something in Springfield yeah. Amen. I think we're living in some exciting times Amen. let's just hang on and see what God's going to do no churches could probably be more opposite than those two pastors right there, but they're good friends. Work Amen. together. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Well, well, what is this? And you know what? I had to put in a plug for b -Mick. <laughs> We don't worship b -Mick. It's just a name, a group, an organization. But we got people that want to reach across these lines and break down these barriers and get all of us together then maybe God can use us together to do something right here. Amen. Okay, here we go. Not going to preach, just going to read. <laughs> Ezekiel preach. chapter, you know, right there it is, first page. You got it. Verse 13. The devil was in the Garden of Eden. Okay. Verse, uh, right on down, about five lines from that. The devil is a created being. That's important to you. That's important to you to know. The devil is a created being. And verse 15 says it again. He's a created being. He's not God. He's not more powerful than God. He's not equal in power with God. He was created by God to serve God in heaven. And he overstepped his bounds and got his tail kicked out. But why God kicked him right down here where we are, 
I think I'll ask him that when I get up there. No, it won't, it won't matter, will it? But the devil is a created being. And verse 17 says, God cast him down to the ground. Right down here where we are. Thanks. <laughs> and then uh, next page, page 2, Isaiah. Uh, here's the devil's, uh, but down about verse 11. Here's the devil's, uh, something's going to happen to him before too long. He's going to be brought down to show, that's the place of the dead. He's going to have maggots spread out for his bed and worms for his covering. Now, is this a rat that you're afraid to go against? <laughs> Come on. Only you can answer that. But after tonight, I think you're going to be able to answer that and say, I ain't afraid of him no more. Bad English, man. <laughs> Verse 15 again says he's going to be kicked down to show. And then uh, next page, page 3. Uh, up the top of the page to the pits. Uh, people are going to gaze on him in verse 16. They're going to gaze on the devil after he gets the snot totally kicked out of him. And they're going to look at him and they're going to say, You're the one? This is what made the earth tremble and shook kingdoms? This? Can we get that view right now? <laughs> Do we have to wait for them to get that view or can we get that view right now? <laughs> It's right here in the book. I'm just, this is the book. The book, I didn't write this book. God would have had this book written. Now, you say, well, Brother Earl, oh, Doc, how am I going to use this? I'm not going to take this city. Well, maybe you can use it in your own prayer life. Maybe you can use it in your own self. Maybe you can use it in your family, your household. Maybe you can use it in your church. And if it gets... Take a match and throw it in the forest. Hey, you know see what I'm saying? Maybe we get this spark going there and there and there and there and there in you and in you and in you and in your house, your house, your church, your church. Like Pastor Mike said. You notice he said he doesn't care what churches are praying on each corner in the city. Not about his church. Not about his denomination. It's about this city. That's right. Amen. 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 Well, that's what I like about me, man. And these guys are in charge here. <clears throat> they know that. Uh, verse 7. There was a war in heaven and Michael, the archangel. And his angels kicked the devil and his angels out of heaven. Oh, I never heard that before, brother. Well, it's in the book. Read the book. Come on. Read the book. It's in there. There was a war in heaven and Michael at God's command. And his angels kicked the devil and his angels out. Yeah. And there's actually a number on that. About one third of the angels <laughs> followed the devil. He deceived and enticed and seduced and polluted one third of the angels in heaven. Come on. And he got kicked out. Right down here with him. Now we got to deal with it. Let's skip ahead. Let's skip ahead. For, uh, page, uh, jump on over to page five, six, seven, make it nine. See, I give you this great old, big old long book. Maybe ten. So your hope is that you'll take this home and one of these cold, long winter evenings you'll read some of this stuff. Get your Bible out. <coughs> we really don't have to because that's all it says in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe, okay, uh, page 10, up there, verse 22. Eli, I'm going to show you something here. Eli, he was a priest. He had these a uh, couple of sons. And they partook of the sacrifices and offerings that people brought into the, to the, to God. They took some for themselves, skimmed some off. Quite a bit, actually. And then verse uh, 11, 20, 22, okay. They would not listen to the voice of the Father, for the Lord desired, desired to put them to death. 
We got some folk in some churches today, maybe even some entire denominations. Now, I'm not the judge, and I'm not wishing anything on anybody, but when I read my Bible, they got some folk out there that walking on shaky ground when it comes to God. Nobody in this room that I know of. Okay? None of y'all, y'all. No, none of you. But there are some. I think in these last days, we're going to see some of that happen. God's going to do some judging. The Bible does say that judgment begins at the house of God. I didn't put that scripture in here, but I can get it for you. Pastor Mike, he knows all that stuff off the top of his head. <laughs> Verse 34. Uh, these two sons, Hopi and Phineas, uh, they're going to get, they're going to die because of the way they polluted the house of God. They're going to die. <coughs> and old Eli, their dad, is going to die too. God's not putting up with all this junk forever. Down to the bottom of the page, Samuel's going to come into, into view here and become the, the next priest. Page 11, verse 19. Samuel found favor in the Lord. Why? From the Lord. Why? Because he did what the Lord said. The other folks didn't. He did. And the Lord let none of his words fall to the ground. But everything he said <coughs> come about. Because he didn't say anything that God didn't want him to say. And God backed her up. I like that. I'd like to be that person too. Obviously I'm not. <laughs> Verse, uh, page 12. talks about these two, two sons of Eli. They were killed in a battle. The Philistines killed them. And when Eli heard the news, he fell over and broke his neck and died. Why did he die? Because he didn't take care of his own household. He was a priest. These two sons of this were brought into the priesthood by him. Come on. He didn't take care of that. Maybe some pastors Maybe we could get a, a lesson out of this for some pastors taking care of their own household or even their own church. Just saying. Amen. But well, now wait. If he's not in my church, how am I going to get him changed? You, you decide which one you want in your church that you can change or which one you want in your church because you want more seats filled. Come on. It's up to you. You figure it out. Uh, page 13, verse 21. The glory departed from Israel. I would venture to say, if you want to call me a prophet, go ahead. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> but the glory is departing from the United States. Yeah. We can turn that around, hopefully. Or we can sit on our pews <laughs> and watch it happen. <laughs> and then say, oh, my, somebody ought to do something. <laughs> point to yourself, please. Point to yourself. Or point to the guy next to you. you know. <laughs> somebody ought to do something. <laughs> maybe if we all can do a little bit, and maybe if we all get that little spark going, then we got a blaze going. Like Pastor <coughs> Mike was talking about. I like that guy, can you tell? I like Pastor Brian. I like all of y'all. These guys kind of touch my heart tonight. Oh, uh, page 14, I guess. Samuel, even though he was a great prophet, in verse 3, his sons didn't walk in the way. <laughs> okay. We're going to make it. going to show us, well, how can I do something? I'm only one person. I'm only a small church. Uh, how can BMEC do something? We're only, what, 100 members? I don't know how many members are we. It doesn't matter. We can't do anything. We're not big enough. 
Look at this, uh, page 14, verse 2, 1 Samuel, verse 2. Samuel had uh, Israel, this is Saul, King Saul. <coughs> We're up to King Saul now. In chronological order here if you want to do that. We're going through about four years of teaching here in 20 minutes or 30. <laughs> so that's why I skip around. But I know what's in between. Anyway, 1 Samuel uh, verse 2. They had 3,000 men. That's their army. They had 3,000 men. Down in verse 5, it talks about the Philistines. 30,000 chariots, <laughs> 6,000 horsemen, and their soldiers were so numerous as the sand is on the seashore. You can't even count these dudes. There's so many of them. Yeah. And the 30,000 chariots, and uh, is that what it says? And 6,000 horsemen. And uh, Saul has, Israel has 3,000 man army. They're pretty much outnumbered. And the prophet said, God said, we're going to do this burnt offering and sacrifice and all this, and then the prophet's going to show up and do it. But he doesn't get there at the point of time. That's down in verse 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, on down in there. So the king, catch this phrase, the king is a type of state. President, Congress, you get me now where we're coming from? The state. takes the job of the church. The prophet being the type of the church. The prophet's supposed to offer this sacrifice and peace offering and such. And the state takes that, steps in and decides what's going to happen in religion. Going on right now, Bernie talked about it already tonight a couple times and Mike picked up on it and talked a little bit about it. That's not going to make God happy. You want to make sure you're on the right side of that deal. Catch this. Even how you vote. Well, I vote for him or her or that party or this party because... No. You vote for him or her or that party because they're the most godly ones available. Forget anything other than that. But my billfold... My job. Hey, you're talking to an iron worker who belonged to Iron Workers Local Union number 46. Mm -hmm. I put that word in there, union, on purpose. Because they tell me who I have to vote for. Hey, I vote for the most godly person and the most godly party on the ticket, regardless. You do as you please. Amen. Oh. Okay, <clears throat> page 19, down toward the bottom of the page, 1 Samuel 14, verse 1. Jonathan, he was King Saul's son, and he takes his armor bearer. I love this. I'm going to read this. Now the day came that Jonathan, the son of Saul, said to the young man who carried his armor, that's his armor bearer, Come, let us cross over to the Philistine garrison that is on the other side. I just told you they got 30,000 chariots and 6,000 horsemen and so many soldiers you can't even count. And here's this, two dudes. Come, let us go over, cross over to the Philistine garrison on the other side. But he didn't tell his father the king what he's going to do. The next page, verse 20, verse 6. Then Jonathan said to his armor bearer, Come. Let us cross over to the garrison of these uncircumcised. There's a key. Everybody say uncircumcised. Uncircumcised. What does that mean? Have anything to do with the foreskin on the male organ? Yeah, but not really. That's not the importance here. What does that mean? Pastor Mike. What? They're lost. Unbelievers. It's about your heart. It means covenant. The circumcision was a sign of the covenant with God. Now listen to what Jonathan is saying. Listen to what Jonathan is saying here. He said, let us go over to these uncircumcised. Perhaps the Lord will work for us. For the Lord is not restrained to save by many or by few. Come on. 
How many men? 30,000 chariots, 6,000 horsemen, and soldiers. So many we can't even count them. And here, two people go over there. <laughs> with this kind of faith, we got a covenant with God. They don't. We win. That's it. Come on, that's good. Amen. Come on. <laughs> Well, there's not enough of us. There's only 10 in my church or 20. There's only two of these guys. Come on. And the armor bearer, he's not really doing anything except going along. <laughs> but at least he's going along. Yeah. Come on. Verse 11. Oh, this is, this is nuts. Both of them reveal themselves. <laughs> they jumped up and said, here we are. Come on. <laughs> They're going to die if God ain't in on this. <laughs> you think they really care? I don't think they thought they were even going to die. Come on. I think they actually thought God's going to show up and do something. That's right. That's faith. Uh, Verse 11. <laughs> And they revealed themselves to the garrison of the uncircumcised Philistines. Wow. Verse 14. Jump down to verse 14. The first slaughter which Jonathan and his armor bearer made was about 20,000 men? Come on. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's only two of these guys, and one of them just carries the armor for the other one. And how the heck did they kill 20,000 Philistines? You're going to have to ask God. But I don't have the answer. I just know what happened. Yeah. I read it right here in the book. That's how I know. Verse 15. There was trembling in the camp. I mean, these, how was it now? Let's go over this again. It's 30,000 chariots, right? 6,000 horsemen and more soldiers than anybody can count. And they're trembling in their camp. <laughs> these two dudes ain't got sense enough to know this can't work. But it did work. I love it. You tracking with me so far? Yeah. Okay. You got an amen for Pastor Brian. Amen. <laughs> Verse 30, page 22. King David, or excuse me, woo! Shepherd boy David. Come on. This little pipsqueak, the youngest boy in this family, David, out there tending the sheep. And his dad said, your brothers, they're fighting down there. They ain't fighting, they're just watching the giant spout off each morning and going back to camp. That's really all they're doing. But anyway, dad said, take him some, something to eat. Take him some cheese and, I don't know, some sandwiches or something. I'm sure it wasn't ham sandwich, but some kind of sandwich. <laughs> take him something to eat. That wasn't ham. I don't know what it was. Go. My bingo, yeah. Okay, we're on page 22. We're on verse 26. And David, this shepherd boy, now this is not King David yet. They've, uh, you're going to have to read the, the first, you know, several pages before this to find out Goliath. The dude, his head is about to up the height of that rim. That's 10 foot. He's got all this armor and all these swords and javelins and spears. And he's got an armor bearer. Come on. His, his armor... His shield, he's got a shield bearer, that's what he's got, excuse me, a shield bearer. His shield is such that you stick it in the ground and he can get down behind it if he needs to and nothing can hit him. Remember, he got taken out by a rock. But he's got this shield that he can get behind, nothing can hit him. Verse 26. David, after David knows how big this dude is and all that. Here's David's response. He said, uh, What will we done for the man who kills this uncircumcised Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? Now, if Israel could be a type of God's kingdom on earth at that time, which it is, and if the church could be a type of God's kingdom on earth now, which it is, is there reproach coming against the church now? Yeah. More and more and more every day. And David, this little pipsqueak shepherd boy, says, Tell me again, what will be done for the man that takes away the reproach 
from Israel. Okay. What will be done for the church or the people that take away the reproach from the church today? I don't know. I'm not interested in that part of it. I'll get whatever got coming, no more, no less. That's it. I don't care. Down to verse 36. David says, he says, hey, he's trying to talk his way into, you know, being allowed to do what he what he wants to do. He's talking to the king, King Saul. And uh, of course, the king's gonna have to give him permission to do it. And he said, heck, he said, I done killed the lion and the bear, and he said, This uncircumcised Philistine. <laughs> There's that word again. Goliath had no covenant with God. David does. Therefore, David wins. Goliath loses. Ten foot tall makes no difference. Shepherd boy with a sandwich? No. Makes no difference. Got a covenant with God. I win. He loses. It's over. Where are we now? I get one. Uh, page 23, verse 41. Then the uncircumcised Philistine came on and approached David, and he has this shield bearer in front of him. See what I'm saying? You can't hit this dude with a rock. You're nuts if you think you can. Come on. 41. Oh, no, I just read that. I'm sorry. 48, go down to 48. Then it happened when the uncircumcised Philistine rose and came and drew near to David. David ran quickly to get away. <laughs> no! It's impossible for him to whoop this dude. David's dead. Come on. If God does not show up. But David runs quickly toward the big dude. With a plan. Now the, the king, King Saul, has already offered David the king's own armor and sword. He tried it on. He said, Louise, come on. I want this junk. <laughs> so he gets him a shepherd's staff. Let that be a lesson for you all pastors. Come on. He gets his shepherd's staff. I think it says a stick. You look it up and it's a shepherd's staff. And he gets his little pouch and his little slingshot and he put five rocks in there. There's two ways to look at that. I don't know which one's wrong. I tried to turn both of them. <laughs> Some say that uh, Goliath had five brothers. He ready to kill them all. There's another theory that that's the five-fold ministry, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Choose them both if you want to. I did. I don't care. Can you tell? I'm having a good time. Okay, verse 50. David prevailed over the uncircumcised Philistine. I told you why already. Same reason Jonathan prevailed over 30,000 chariots, 6,000 horsemen. And so many soldiers you can't count, killed 20,000 of them in the first swoop. How does that happen? It got to be God. Why? Okay, here's David, King David, verse 50. He prevailed over the uncircumcised Philistine with a sling and a stone. <coughs> Hit the old boy between the eyes and killed him. Graveyard dead. Then David, verse 51, he runs up there, takes the Philistine's sword, and whacked his head off. Yeah, come on. Then he drug it around. Woo! <laughs> if that happened today, I know what the church is saying. Show off! Yeah. God wasn't upset about this. <laughs> well, am I right, Mike? You're right. Preach, brother. Well, I'm just teaching. I'm not preaching. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to preach in the morning. He's a preacher. I'm just a teacher. That's all I do, brother. Oh, where was it? I got a lot David, verse 51. David chopped the dude's head off and drug it around through town. Well, back to the camp, anyway. 
And then, here, here, here's the key. Both, both, if you go back with Jonathan and the armor bearer, they start this victory, and then the whole group comes and gets in on it, mop, mop up at you. See, he's a military, he's talking about Navy. I'm a Vietnam brat, I know a little bit about combat. Too. Shore duty. Huh? Shore duty. Yeah, I was sure, dude. It sure was in the view up to my waist. Yeah, I sure was. How's that? That's how we're coming back. Three hots in the car, maybe, you know. You'll figure it out. Somebody. Somebody's got to take us over there, though. <laughs> Now, in verse 53 on page 24, see, after David starts his victory, then the rest of them come in and plunder the camp. You know what plunder is? You know what that means? It means they went over there after they defeated these dudes and took everything they had. Come on. 30,000 chariots, 6,000 horsemen, and more soldiers than you can count. Don't you think they had some loot, plunder, yeah. loot to plunder? Yeah. So these guys go over there and they... Probably got dump trucks. Well, no, they had that. But they got a lot of stuff to bring back home. Do what? Use the chariot. Use the chariot. There you go. See, he's smart. He's smarter than me. That's why he gets freeze in the morning. I didn't. Lord, thank you. I love you. Same thing with Jaws, man. Armor bearer. After those two knuckleheads started the victory, then the whole... Israelite camp got in on the plunder. Bring all that stuff back. God ain't no dummy. He's a Jew. <laughs> I didn't say that, did I? <laughs> Lord, help me. Uh, Bless you, Lord. <laughs> verse Samuel 15, verse 1. Then Samuel said to Saul, uh, <coughs> This is enough. This is good. I love this. The Lord sent me to anoint you king over the Lord who sent you. Know, he sent me to anoint you as king over his people, Israel. Now, therefore, listen to the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I will punish the enemy king. Okay, that's who this dude is. I'm out. He's the enemy king. He said, I'm going to punish him for what he did to Israel. Now, listen, folk, uh, Israel was God's kingdom at that point in time. Right now, the church is God's kingdom on planet Earth at this time. Mm -hmm. There's people harassing the church. It's not my job to do anything to them. But listen to this. God's fixing to whoop up on somebody. Mm -hmm. yes. Ain't going to be me. Thank God for that. Listen to the word of the Lord. That says the Lord, I'm going to punish these people for what they're doing to Israel or for what they're doing to the church. Okay? How he set himself against him on the way coming from Egypt to go strike Amalek and utterly destroy all that he has. Utterly destroy all that he has. Do not spare him. Put to death both men and women, children, infants, oxen, sheep, camels, and donkeys. Yeah. Don't bring no plunder home with you. Come on. Wipe it all out. Now you say, was well, that bloodthirsty? No, we're not going to do that today. We're not going out there and kill folk. But what we're supposed to do is put the enemy's, <sighs> help me on this, stuff yeah. out of business. <laughs> that would take down a lot of movie theaters maybe even a lot of businesses maybe even a lot of television shows maybe even a lot of music and entertainment maybe a lot of financial institutes not yours <laughs> y'all need some financial advice he wouldn't pump his own horn but probably does that's what he does and a lot of the money that comes in off of that comes in right in here to be, man. Amen. Did I cross the line? Okay. <coughs> God blesses him. He does what he's supposed to. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it.
Where was I? Help me, somebody. I lost. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not. Uh, so anyway, oh, down in uh, verse 8. 24, verse, uh, verse 8. So, King Saul captured the king of the Amalekites alive, utterly destroyed, okay, and he brought back, he brought back everything that wasn't worthless. He brought back some stuff. He even brought back the king. And then the word, uh, verse 10, and the word of the Lord came to Samuel, saying, I regret that I have made Saul king, for he has turned back from following me and has not carried out my commandments. Doesn't matter how strange or peculiar it may seem to us what God wants done. Come on. God says, my thoughts are above your thoughts. My ways are above your ways. Our job is to get in there and do what God wants done, whether we understand it or really whether we agree with it. But we probably won't. We're finite mortal beings. We're not that smart. Come on. He's sovereign. He's eternal. He's immortal. He's a creator. He knows. Just go with his plan, it'll work. Amen. If you don't, it won't. <coughs> uh, verse. Page 25, verse, uh, where are we? Verse 22, I guess. The Lord doesn't take delight in, as much delight in burnt off. Okay, uh, to obey is better than to sacrifice. For rebellion, verse 23, is the same as the sin of divination. And insubordination is an iniquity and idolatry. And because of this, God, in verse 23, down toward the bottom, God rejected Saul from being king after he had all this success and victory, but he took things into his own hands. He didn't wait for the prophet. He offered a sacrifice, a peace offering. He <coughs> didn't wait. The stake did it instead of the church doing it, okay? The stake took the, I hate to use the word religion, but I am going to, the religious business out of the hands of the church and the state's making a decision. That's what's going on in this country right now at the national and state level. And as Bernie said, and already alluded to it, things are fixing to get worse if they have their way. Verse 29, okay, verse 28. The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from king. They're going to give it to somebody else. This will be about where David shows up. Little shepherd boy doesn't kill the big giant. Now he's about to show up and be King David. He wasn't perfect either, but <laughs> he replaced this guy. Verse 20. The glory of Israel will not lie nor change his mind, for he is not a man that he should change his mind. Verse 32, very bottom of page 25. Then the prophet, type of the church, says to the king Saul, type of the state, Bring me the enemy king. Next page, verse 26, I think. Is my math is right. And the enemy king, he comes up. A guy, whatever his name is here, king comes up. And he said, oh, it's been a while. And things have kind of calmed down. And the bitterness is probably gone. He's not going to you know, kill me. I, the king didn't kill me. This prophet's not going to kill me. Wrong. Verse 33. And Samuel, the prophet, the type of the church, takes a sword and kills this dude. Here's my point. The church finished the business left undone by the state. It's up to us, folks. We vote for this one. We vote for that one. We vote for another. We vote for somebody else. I already told you, vote for the one that's the most godly. But really, don't expect them to fix this nation for us. If this nation is going to get fixed, it's got to be the church. Amen. Uh, there's one lesson for you right there. The prophet, the type of the church, finished the business left undone by the king, the type of state. Whack the head off the enemy. Finished the undone business. 
John chapter 12, same page, verse 31. Jesus speaking. He says, now is judgment upon this world. Now the prince, the devil, the prince, prince of the powers of the air, prince of this world. He's in charge of this world system. Shall be cast out. Let's skip. I don't know what time it is. We gotta go. Uh, page 27, top of the page. Jesus still speaking. Verse 11. The ruler or the prince of this world has been judged. The devil's already been judged. You need to know that. He's the guy we're fighting against or his minions or his pipsqueaks and pimps. Whatever name you want to put on it. The devils, the demons. Yeah, they're out there. The Baptist talked about demons, so I can talk about demons. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think helps the devil? Come on. Demons. You're used to that terminology. I think you're going to hear a lot of it. Yeah. And then they use people. Yes. So you're not fighting against the person. You're fighting against the evil, wicked, spiritual powers in them or coercing them, whatever, driving them. And it all traces back to the devil who done got himself kicked out of heaven with one third of the angels, their spirit beings. They're still here on planet Earth. And they're not helping God. And they're not on our side. Come on. Oh, I never heard that before, preacher. No, I'm a teacher. Okay, no. It's true. Whether you heard it or not, it's true. That's Mike. Okay, Ephesians 1, still on page 27. Verse 18. This is Paul. He's praying. He said, I pray the eyes of your heart be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of your calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us? His power, God's power for us to use for him to accomplish his work, his will, his way on planet earth. This told you the devil works through people. God works through people. Toward us who believe. These are in accordance with the workings of the strength of his might. Verse 20. Which he, God, brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Far above. Listen to this, verse 21. Jesus, Jesus is seated. Far above. That means in authority. Not necessarily geographic location. Authority. Far above. All principalities, authorities, powers, dominions. Uh, I think, who was it talking about the four categories? Was that? Yeah, Roger talked about that earlier. I said, yeah, that's in mine. He must have read my notes. No, he didn't. Good guess. And authority, power, dominion. And every name that can be named. Think of a name that you would like to overcome. Oh, Tom, Dick, no. How about cancer? Come on. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Come on. Hey. That's a name. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is seated above every name that can be named. That's right. Amen. I'm a cancer survivor. Did you know that? More than once. I'm a cancer survivor. My wife's a cancer survivor. You didn't know that. I didn't tell you. That is named not only in this age, but also in the age to come. This is good. Verse 22, And God put all things in subjection under Christ Jesus' feet, when he raised him up into heaven and set him at his own right hand. That position to God's right hand is supreme authority. 
That's that position. Supreme authority. Now, all these stuff, things that we fight with daily, are under Jesus' feet, and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And there's all the Greek. Y'all like Greek? There it is. Look at it tomorrow. Next page, 28. Ephesians 2. It tells you up in verse 1 and verse 2 that we once walked according to the course of this world, and the world is walking according to the prince of the power of the air. That's the devil. The whole world. Read you earlier where Jesus said he's the prince of this world. Read that to you at least twice. Got a pastor over there taking notes. That's a good thing. <laughs> Power there of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Yeah, I talked to you about spirits. They're working in the sons of disobedience. Either they're in them or on them or around them. Is he possessed or is he obsessed? I don't care. They're getting their work done through him and in him. That's right. Verse 4. But God, being rich in mercy because of his greatness, great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in <clears throat> transgressions, made us alive with Christ, verse 6, and raised us up with Christ, hallelujah, Amen. and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. Jesus is up there. I'm talking now not geography, but authority. Come on. Jesus is up there and everything's under his feet and he's the head of the church so everything is under the church's feet. Come he on. set us Amen. up there with him and everything's under our feet. Amen. Brother, would you pray for me? I got a headache. <laughs> Take care of it yourself. <laughs> you ever feel like saying that sometime, Pastor? Amen. Be honest. <laughs> <laughs> In case you didn't hear what he said, he pleaded the Fifth Amendment. <laughs> Why not take that away from us too? I love it. <laughs> okay, where are we? Uh, let's just jump down to verse ten. We are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. Yeah which he, God, prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them, so we'd do them continuously. Uh, first Corinthians, down on down, still on page 28. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6. Yet we do speak wisdom among those who are mature, a wisdom, however, not of this world, not of this age, not of this world, nor the rulers, princes of this world or age, who are passing away. Come on. They're passing away. They already been judged. They already been kicked out. Come on. They're passing away. Yeah. They're losing. Yeah. We just don't know that. Why don't you know that? I know why you don't know that, because your preacher didn't tell you that. <coughs> and the preachers, your seminary didn't tell you that. Well, I do have a doctorate degree in theology from a very small, independent Bible college and seminary that nobody ever heard of. But I got taught Bible truths. Actually, I ended up teaching there somewhat. Okay, then it went out of business. <laughs> it did, though. The guy was in charge of it. Told me, actually asked me to take it over. I didn't. He died. It, the person that did take it over let it fold up. So that's the whole story. Tell us a story. Now. Tell us a story. <laughs> verse 6. We speak in this wisdom. Uh, verse 7. But we speak God's wisdom in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God predestined before the world, before the age, to our glory. The wisdom which, listen to this, none of the rulers or princes of this world or this age has understood. They can't understand it. Come on. They cannot understand it. 
They're not born again filled with the Holy Ghost. They can't understand it. Yeah. For if they had understood it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Come on. Listen, that sealed their defeat. Yeah. When Jesus took the stripes on his back yeah. for your healing, Amen. shed his blood for the remission, forgiveness, cleansing of your sin, yes. that's the only thing that will get you into heaven is to have your sins forgiven. The only way to have your sins forgiven is to make connection with Jesus, yeah. specifically the blood of Jesus. Amen. I don't care which one of these churches you join. If they ain't praising Jesus, Come they on. are, though. I know these guys. <laughs> they are. It's all right. Whew. They would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Because that just sealed their defeat. Then Jesus got raised up there authoritatively speaking, and we even got raised up there with him. Yeah, now, Pastor Mike, or, uh, yeah, that Mike. <laughs> Jesus up on the Mount of Transfiguration. He comes down. These nine guys are down there. Why couldn't they cast that demon out? And if you read, he was nice. He was polite when Jesus, when he said that Jesus said, how long have I got to be with you? What he really said was, you guys just don't get it. How long am I going to put up with you? Come on. It was strong. Yeah. How many of us got it? Come on. You look at me and you say, well, why don't you go out and change the world? Maybe we, maybe I need a little help. <laughs> maybe 10 or 20 or 30 or 100 of us or 15, 1,500 of us. In Springfield, maybe we can make a difference. Mm -hmm. I know, I preached about Jonathan and David, they did it. <laughs> I'm not quite there yet with my faith, all right? I need y'all's help. Pastor Mike, Pastor Brian, I can't, oh. Nate. Nate, Nate, <laughs> George. John. John. We can be your armor bearer. Ben. Yeah, <laughs> need armor bearer, there you go. Somebody be these guys' as armor bearer. If you go to one of these guys' church, be their armor bearer. Yeah. Go up to them and say, Preacher, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? The preacher said, well, no, I don't know how to do that. Yeah. Do something. What do you want you to do, please? He need, I had an armor bearer one time. I mean, a, a spiritual armor bearer, Todd. I can't tell you where we went and what we did. You wouldn't believe it if we did. <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty thrilling. Pretty thrilling. Amen. Over a period of, I don't know how many months, we went out and about. Nobody knew we were there. But the devil did. And God did. Okay. I'm going to read that again at the top of page 29. If they had understood it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Verse, okay, we already had this. Ephesians 6, our struggle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle. We wrestle. See, it's not really a battle, it's a wrestle. It's a wrestling match. It's not really a battle. The battle's won. Yeah. The victory's ours. But here's the deal. Have you ever had this stray cat that kept hanging around your house? <laughs> you kick him off the back porch four times a day. And he's back every day. Yeah. It's kind of a struggle. It's kind of a wrestle. He comes back four times every day. We got one in our neighborhood. And I used to yell at him, show my ignorance that way. But uh, <laughs> finally, <laughs> God is my witness on this. And I saw something kind of shiny laying in the grass. And I reached down and picked it up. I got it up about here and I realized it's a rat's tail. That cat had done ate a rat. And I said, hey, you're welcome here. But anyway. <laughs> You got this little stray animal that keeps coming around, yapping and nipping and yapping and carrying on, you know? Yeah. He's defeated. Yeah. But if you don't know that, if you don't believe that, and if you don't enforce that, he's going to eat your lunch. That's right. Because yes. you leave that back door open, that stray cat's going to eat your lunch. <laughs> Am I right? Mm -hmm. Let me 
mean, it's very simple, but that's how I'm built. <laughs> Come on, good stuff. Yeah, thank you, brother. You're nice. See, I got an amen him tomorrow. He <laughs> <laughs> preaches, he preaches back. Amen, brother. Okay, where are we? <laughs> Colossians, Colossians, the middle of the page there, still on 29, page 29, Colossians 1, verse, uh, verse 13. God rescued us from the dominion of darkness. That's the devil's kingdom, if you will, because he's the prince of this world. And we once walked as the world walks. So we were walking with the devil, didn't even know it. Thought we were having a good time down there. I paid fifty dollars like last night to get drunk. Now I'm broke and sick. Wow, we had a good time. <laughs> and you look out the window to see if your car's in the driveway. Boy, we had a good time, huh, Brian? Yeah. Now, <laughs> how dumb can you get? All right. But God delivered us from that dominion of darkness and he translated in the, us into the kingdom Come on. of his beloved son whom he loves. Lord. Kingdom. A part of the kingdom. Yeah. Now maybe I don't need to go and fight about this. But I'm part of a kingdom. Yeah, you are. God put me there. Because yeah. he wants me there. Yeah. Now, I got kingdom authority. Yeah. I got kingdom responsibility. Yeah, you do. Ooh. Uh -huh. Had to go there. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, I didn't pay you to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> he used to be my friend. I don't even tell him to We'll find out tomorrow. Oh, this is probably our closing verse, page 30, up at uh, verse 8. I'll say this to you, <laughs> as if Paul was saying it to these folks. He said, see to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deception according to the traditions of men. That's the Holy Ghost one, man. <laughs> According to the elementary principles of this world, God is a supernatural, miracle working God. Yeah. We're not bound by what the doctor can do. Come on. We're not bound by the loan from the bank. Come on. Brother Brian's working on a miracle right now. <coughs> Had to leave his church buildings. Took a pretty bad looking place. Yeah. Amen. Has it been a miracle? Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Brother Mike mm -hmm. took over a church. Had how many people in it? Well, go ahead. Be honest. I know you're humble. Well, uh, five, ten. Uh, there was probably the first time when I came to visit the first time. Their pastor left, and there was a guest speaker there. There was probably I don't know, maybe fifteen. 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 I know John. Is he still here? Um, yeah, John back there. Is that about what it was? Fifteen. It, was, it wasn't too many. How many now? And so it depends on. But we've had uh, as high as, uh, we've had as high as nearly 75 on Sunday morning. From 15 to 75. In 30 years, right? Oh, not 30 years, two years. <laughs> Come on. We average around, we're averaging right around 60 or so. You know, we've had, the cool thing is, is we've had around 53, new, 53 to 55 new members, and probably 80% of those are new salvation oh. back home. Take a church of 15 people out. Okay. That's his business, right? See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deception according to the traditions of men, according to the elementary principles of this world, rather than according to Christ. For in him all the fullness of deity dwells in bodily form, and in him 
you have been made complete. I could probably spend a couple hours looking all that up in the Greek, and I have, but uh, I didn't put it in here. And he, Jesus Christ, is the head of all rule, principality, and authority. Now, jump, jump down to verse 15. When God disarmed <laughs> I told you a while ago, I read it, that they would not have crucified Jesus if they had known what it was going to cost them. They thought they were killing Jesus, and that's it, he's gone. But the third day, here it is. That's after he went down below and kicked the devil, kicked the cage off of hell. Yeah. You haven't heard that preach. And then he went up to heaven and cleans heaven with his own blood. You heard that priest? Yeah. Because sin was in heaven when the devil sinned up there. Well, I never heard that before, preacher. Jesus went up there and cleansed heaven with his own blood. That's why at one point in time, the lady tried to grab him and he said, don't touch me. I have not yet ascended to my father. Come on. Then later, he said, stick your hand in there. Stick your finger right in my hand there. Difference. Okay. People say the Bible contradicts itself. That's because they ain't got sense enough to understand why it went on there. He went up to heaven, took a trip, cleansed that place with his own blood, came back down to earth. Yeah. You agreeing with me, brother? Yes, okay. They don't preach that everywhere. Verse 15. God disarmed the rulers, the principalities, the powers, the authorities, and he made a public display out of them, triumphing over them through the cross of Christ. That's why if the devil and his little gang had known what it was going to cost them, they would never kill him, but he didn't stay dead. He came back, he actually said, and I think it's John, either chapter 14, 15, 16, it's all one little teaching there. They didn't want Jesus, the disciples didn't want Jesus to go. And he said, no, it's better for you if I go. Because, this would be my paraphrase, but when Jesus was here, he was one person in one place at one time. He goes up there, he sends the Holy Ghost down. Now the Holy Ghost can be in all you all, everywhere, all the time. <coughs> Closing prayer. May I?